In January 2014, 70 global leaders representing diverse interfaith communities from diverse sexual and gender identities gathered in South Africa to deliberate on the important linkages between human rights, spirituality, religion, sexuality, and gender identity. My name is Poon. I'm Malaysian. I'm living in the United States, New York. Uh, I'm a university professor teaching sociology and gender studies and also a pastor at MCC New York and also uh, the director of Asian Affairs of MCC Global Justice Institute. Hi, I'm Burak. Uh, I'm coming from Turkey. I'm an architect and working a volunteer-based organization in Istanbul. My name is Adam. I'm coming from Serbia, not Siberia. It's a little bit south in Europe. I'm working in the Center, but I'm also volunteering in Belgrade Pride Parade. The main reason I'm here so, is this expertise for the uh, visibility of intersex people. And uh, I'm the founder of an uh, organization, Intersex International Chinese, that's for Chinese-speaking people. It's important for intersex people to connect internationally because we have to find energy uh, internationally because we don't have many people uh, in our country come up and we need more uh, power from uh, international. Thank you very much. So I'm a founder of St. Paul's Reconciliation and the Equality Center <coughs> in Kampala. Joe Jolie Matayla from the Kingdom of Tonga, <laughs> not from Togo. <laughs> Look at this beautiful feature, it's from the Pacific. <laughs> Not from Africa. Not that I don't mind finding a husband from Africa. <laughs> At the conference, delegates worked hard at addressing four major issues that affect the LGBTI community. Working together to establish the global interfaith network, now known as JIN, four issues were addressed. Safe spaces, knowledge building on religion and sexuality, structures and leadership of JIN, networking and global advocacy. From that place of feeling oppressed to that place of liberty, that place of inclusion, that place of love. And we discussed that in many different areas. And to start with, we said that when we talk about safe spaces, we have to, have to speak both about internal <coughs> safe spaces and external safe spaces. So in our internal spaces, we said there are a number of things that you have to work with. You have to work with finding self-acceptance. We have to be able to guarantee confidentiality. And we have to be able to speak about helping people to grow within that personal space into self-acceptance and to eventually be able to engage more broadly than just themselves. When you're talking about external, Externally is different, and we have to look at different dynamics there. And so we would want to say, if we are looking for a safe space externally, it would be a place where there is no fear, a place where there is affirmation. And for that to happen, we need to know that there is no scrutiny, there is no judgment, there is no hatred. Rather, there is affirmation. We came up with a list of the different uh, mechanisms, regional and international uh, mechanisms uh, that could be engaged with by, by Jin, and then just brainstormed a few of the organizations who are already doing this work, uh, either uh, generally on human rights or specifically on, on sexual orientation and gender identity, uh, who could be resource organizations. Uh, there's one of them is, is the organization I work for, ARC International, and we'd be more than happy to uh, put you in touch with others as well. Yeah, so um, we really discussed that, you know, it's very important to own our own documentation for us, not to let other people document our stories for us, but that we should be the ones documenting our own stories. We, we need to really own our narratives, and uh, we really need to be uh, able to define our own stories ourselves and not let other people tell them um, and, you know, risk that they're not being told properly. Of course, there's also Iranti or uh, 
Jabri right here, who's been doing amazing work on, on documentation. So we really talk about you know how important it is to tell the whole story as well. You know how to how to document um, in a way that uh, makes stories unquestionable. That people, if you document the whole story, everything that's going on around the story, then it really makes it much harder for other people to come in and try to um, retell that story in a different way or to say that's not what happened. I'm going to tell you a different way that it happened in a, in a negative sense. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to more to walk on stormy seas. I am strong. Shoulders, you raise me up to more than I can be. The Jin Conference was a much needed space for LGBTIQ activists who face state repression, hate speech, and violence on a daily basis. Most recently, Nigeria has passed the Same Sex Marriage Prohibition Act of 2013. Activists who ordinarily celebrated their identities now live in fear of facing arrests. At this conference, identities had to be concealed. And in solidarity with activists from Uganda, Burundi and Nigeria, the Jin Network created a space of healing and solidarity and a celebration of our identities. My name is Jide Macaulay and I'm the founder of the House of Rainbow Christian Fellowship. Uh, this is a fellowship that started in Nigeria in 2006 and we've since extended uh, the fellowship to Ghana, to the United Kingdom, to Malawi, Burundi and Lesotho. Uh, it's a, a, an organization that actually helps sexual minorities on their journey of reconciliation of sexuality and faith. Uh, we've done this in, in many places that hostility is quite high. It is so important to us because we believe in the Christian doctrines that welcome all people and indeed uh, an affirmation of all people as well. We certainly have fears, um, you know, since the uh, 13th of January in particular uh, and up to date there has been over 68 you know, arrest. There are many more people that have been subjected to blackmailing, um, you know, torture and beating, you know, throughout, you know, many cities in Nigeria. We do have concerns. I mean, House of Rainbow is a legitimate NGO and registered with the government. But of course, you know, we have been very vocal on the inclusion and affirmation of sexual minorities. So immediately our work will suffer. We will be thrown into jeopardy. And there is a possibility that we, you know, we will be one of the first set of people that they'll be looking for. Many countries in Africa has come together to say that, you know, um, you know, they are prepared, you know, to pass laws, you know, to outlaw uh, same-sex relationship. Now, this conference, I believe, will make a difference because this is the first time in the history of interfaith communities to come together to actually resuscitate the liberal interpretation of a religious text. And of course, a lot of people are challenged. You know, there are nearly 70 delegates at this conference. And I believe that these are people that will make a difference, both at grassroots level, right through academic, and even into policy makers. We need to have a, a, an, a, an emergency rethink of how we respond to sexual minorities. Jin, Global Interfaith Network. This has been a blessing in disguise for me, actually. Um, I was having a lot of expectations when coming here to Jin, to this conference, and uh, I'm actually feeling very healed in the same process. I'm actually feeling coming back to my roots, knowing my, identifying myself with religion. I forget about the hate words that I hear. I forget about the looks that I get. I forget about that. I don't hear that. All I hear is me and God, you know, and, and that's what I mean by being with one with yourself, that you do understand the path that you're going on, and you do understand where you want to go, because at the end of the day, these words that you hear, these looks that you get, are nothing, that's it. It's them that have the issue, not you. Fafafine is a cultural identity, it identifies who I am. And that, as I, as I said before, 
mentioned before in having it in a cultural context, um, we do not we do not we do not have issues as the rest of the world, like such as same sex marriage, such as uh, um, changing your name or having that another X on the arrival card at the airport. Those are not issues for us because we're comfortable of who we are. And uh, the issues that we try and struggle with is just being accepted in society. You have Muslim, you have Jews, you have Catholics, you have Protestants, you have every single denomination here possible, Buddhism. And we're all in that one room and people pray in their own languages one by one. And me sitting there, I can understand what they're saying. We're all speaking the same language. And that's the language of praying, the language of healing, the language of belief. We're all coming under one common goal, and that's to be healed. We have to model love. It must come from, from Jin, Amen. from the global network, Amen. interfaith network. Then we can take the message of love back into the churches, into our religious. Amen. The Jin Committee was appointed to lead the agenda in creating a global space where LGBTI communities have the right to religious freedom, to reduce stigma and eliminate intersectional discrimination. The Jin Network has confidence in the leadership of the committee to be the global voice on Soji and religion. We are returning okay. five members of the previous steering committee, as you know, and then you voted for four others. Mm -hmm. So, in no specific order, let us welcome Jide. And let us welcome JP. And then the last seat be belongs to Jacques. Yeah.